It's Tuesday. Are you ready for a tutorial? I guess you are. Today we're going back to basics, looking at something so simple, so elegant, you will wonder why you haven't done it sooner. And if you have done it, then maybe you'll learn some things about what you can do with the Ethereum name service that you didn't already know. That's what we're going to be looking at today. But before we do that, let's hear from our sponsors. Do you want to get actionable insights and find new investment opportunities before everyone else? Nansen is a blockchain analytics platform tracking more than 100 million wallet addresses. Make informed decisions on your yield farming and investments through dashboards like hot contracts, smart money, and NFT paradise, and follow the smart money. See who's aped into an NFT collection or farm, and look into the behavior of money flows on chain. Sign up now at nansen.ai and become a smarter investor today. Siren is a decentralized platform for trading cryptocurrency options. And for those that don't know options that well, as a trader, you can participate in market upside while limiting your risk by buying options on your favorite DeFi tokens. As a liquidity provider, passively earn rewards when people bet on the markets. And you can also earn rewards from the option premiums and SI rewards themselves. Siren removes the middleman and gives the power to run markets directly to you, the DeFi community. So to trade DeFi options or become a liquidity provider, check out Siren by clicking the link in the description. So the Ethereum name service, ENS, what is it? Well, it's basically a way of taking those alphanumeric addresses that we have on Ethereum and making them human readable. So instead of OX, 155, whatever, you get a name dot ETH. So you could have, for instance, the Defiant dot ETH or Robin Schmidt dot ETH or Supermassive dot ETH. And the reason for that is we're all used to email addresses and web sites. Those are all names that point to an alphanumeric address. It's just that we don't see them anymore. And back in the, the weird, wonderful world of the old web, that was how you connected to things. You just typed in that alphanumeric uh, string and then you would be directed to a website. That's all happening under the surface. And the way it happens is using DNS. The ENS network is the same thing just for Ethereum. You can actually also connect your uh, identity to other things like Bitcoin, I believe, and Litecoin and Doge as well. But then there's a bunch of other stuff you can do as well. And the reason I was prompted to have a look at this today was because they just released um, a step-by-step -step guide to setting an, av an NFT as your ENS profile avatar. So what this basically means is, if for instance, I go to Uniswap and I'm logged in, up the top here, it'll say, robinschmidt.eth, that is the ENS domain that's linked to me, to my wallet address. So that when I go onto that um, app, then I see that. With the, the new uh, avatar system, you'll be able to take an ape or a punk or a duck and link that as well, and then that would pop up there. I couldn't make it work. Uh, I did try and find out what was going on here. I know it's possible, and here's what it would look like. So there's a punk that's connected to a text record. We'll go into how all of that works. For some reason, I couldn't make it work. I was able to connect something that made Uniswap look at something, but it wouldn't read it properly. So, um, so I went back to this and I figured actually just doing a basic tutorial on how to set up ENS, how to look for ENS domains could be a useful tutorial. So that's what we're getting into today. So this is ENS and what you can do is search for a name that you might want to own. Let's see what might be a good ENS domain. Well, over the weekend, the pack film went live and then this hashtag sprung up, we are pack. So we could search for we are pack. And it's telling us that we are pack is available, but there are other uh, names that aren't available such as cloudchaser.eth. Cloudchaser is available. Um, Vitalik Buterin, let's search for that. Vitalik Buterin is not available. So if I click on Vitalik Buterin, I can see who registered it, who controls it, when it was registered, and when that registry will expire. And you know the way that people look at kind of well-known .com addresses and they just check when they're expiring and then they pounce on them the moment they do. Well, this is what could happen with Vitalik Buterin. So if Vitalik's not paying attention, because it is Vitalik that owns that um, ENS domain, somebody could snipe it. Now, of course, there will be uh, alerts allowing you to renew your domain that will probably trigger that before it happens. But it, it, there are perfectly big um, domain names that might be desirable that 
people will just let expire because they have no use for them. But, you know, as we've seen in .com addresses, people do speculate on these and they do look for um, ones that might be of interest. You can find them on OpenSea because, that's right, they are NFTs. So if you go on to OpenSea and you look for ENS Ethereum name service, you will find a bunch of these that people have speculated on, yes, and now they're flogging them on the open market. So, for instance, Adobe Systems.eth, that could be very valuable to Adobe. Now, it probably isn't valuable to them right now, but who knows, in 10 years, they might just want to have that. So there's all these different .eth addresses that you can pick up here, and you might end up finding one that you like. Now, this is still super early in this process. So, for instance, if I... <clears throat> like types in we are pack well then that is an ens domain that i can have so i to register it i would click on it and then select register and there's a few steps that, that need to happen you can change the period that you want to register it for so you can change it to i believe let's see how far you can go you can go a long way well yes there we go we could go up all the way up to 10 years which really isn't going to cost you very much and if you think about how valuable this domain could be to you over the course of the next 10, 20 years if we believe that this whole ecosystem is going to change everything we know. That .eth address could be tied to your identity in a DeFi universe and a Metaverse universe for a very long time. So locking it up and knowing that you have it, particularly when it's quite cheap now to do so, could be really valuable to you. And that's why me personally, I made sure I got robinschmidt.eth. I also got supermassive.eth and a couple of others but for this very reason, it's cheap right now. So what you'll do is um, sign a transaction to complete that registration. And then that NFT that represents that registration will belong to you. One more thing you need to do to make it actually connect to your account. We'll just go through that now. So here's a list of the, account, the ENS domains that are connected to me that are in my wallet right now. So if I look at robinschmidt.eth, that's me. And here we can see the registrant, well, that's me. The controller, that's me. What's the difference between the two? So the registrant is the person, thing, that actually registered the address. So that's the, the, the main controller of the address. And the controller themselves can be somebody else. So you, you could be the registrant, but you could assign that control to someone that's running, say, day-to-day -day operations for that address. And that kind of gives you a picture of how this could be set up for organizations to manage uh, ETH accounts and you know, the flow of, of money between different accounts and, and how a business might be handling its crypto, for instance. So <clears throat> if I go back to my account and click on the Robin Schmidt or ETH, sorry, I was meant to go back here. There's also subdomains up here. So for instance, let's say the defiant.eth. So let's say we had a defiant.eth account that would handle contributions, that it would handle um, anything that might be coming in to that account. We could also have subdomains within that that would be robin.thedefiant.eth. So it's exactly like email accounts. And you can add all of those and you can add different ones for different people so that as your organization grows, everyone can be connected through to the same tree of ENS but have their own particular piece of that. So there's different ways that you can set that up and um, different ways that you can um, have it organized for you. But there are certain permissions that you give up as a result of doing that. So it's definitely worth looking into those. It's kind of advanced stuff, probably not suitable for you. Down here, we also have, as, it, as you can see here, addresses linked. So before we can go into that, just need to make sure that we set the reverse record. So this reverse record here is what translates an address into a name. So it allows dApps to show in their interfaces robinschmidt.eth. So rather than the long address, blah, 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 blah. Um, if you would like to set up your reverse for a different account. So basically what you do here is you just click on the drop down menu and then you can select which of your addresses you want to be uh, reflected on a website or dApp or whatever you're connecting with as you. So again, if I go to Uniswap, you can see it displays me as Robin Schmidt. Eth. I could also have the defiance.eth if I wanted to. And I would do that by dropping down here, going to defiance.eth. Easy peasy. It's very, very straightforward to use this. So now we have this. <clears throat> I can go and add and edit the record that is connected to this ENS 
account. So there's an ETH address there right now, but I could also add a BTC account, an LTC account, a Doge account. And that would mean that anybody that wants to send BTC to me could send it to robinschmidt.eth. Wild, huh? Similarly with LTC and similarly with Doge. Now here's where it got interesting. I was This is the string for a bored ape that I own that I was trying to use as my ENS avatar. I followed the instructions to the T and it didn't work. There will almost certainly be a reason why, but it didn't. You can also lock in your email address, a URL, description, keywords, your Twitter account, and a GitHub as well. And I'm sure they're going to be adding more records. In order to set up that record, you do have to sign a transaction. So there's gas to pay to do that. But it's very, very straightforward, except when it comes to the avatar. I couldn't make that work. But I do believe you can link to an HTTPS address, which would do the same thing. But obviously, that's not uh, connecting to what's in your wallet. So you could for instance, set up this EIP-155 uh, to link to an avatar to an NFT that you don't own. But if you went on Uniswap with that avatar, it wouldn't show up for you because it isn't in your wallet. So it knows what you have and it knows what you don't have. Uh, one last thing we can look at is the expiration date here. So this is giving you the time and date when your ENS is going to expire. And you can set up some uh, alerts to make sure that you can renew that on time. Uh, definitely something to be thinking about as well. Uh, but I imagine there's going to be a fair amount of speculation on these as this ecosystem grows. There already has been to a degree. So that's basically how you set up ENS. Uh, it's definitely worth looking into what else you can do with it. The subdomains are particularly interesting if you're setting up an organization. And I think if we're looking to make DeFi and all of the value that we create easy for people to understand, .eth addresses are a very powerful part of that. And having, for instance, for me, you know, as a public person that speaks on a YouTube channel and I am known, uh, the history that's collected behind my .eth address is going to be a very powerful marker for anyone to see how much I am in this system and how much I believe in this system. And it's definitely one of the things moving forward that's going to be a huge part of the metaverse experience is what you have done, the history, you know, what NFTs you've purchased, what DeFi protocols you've interacted with. They will give anyone you interact with a very clear picture of what kind of entity you are. And that has value, genuine, real value. And you can tie it to a .eth address. You can tie it to an identity that forms part of your avatar identity and your address identity. That's powerful stuff. And it's permissionless. You own it. The blockchain, huh? Amazing stuff. That's it for today's tutorial. If you have suggestions for something you'd like to see me cover, do drop it in the comments below. As always, do get subscribed. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I think we're going to get there. Some cool things coming up. Lots of interesting ways for us to kind of grow the audience for what we're doing without giving up, I don't know, bolting tokens on or doing stupid stuff that's just kind of short-termism. We're looking long-term here. So drop us a like, subscribe, get other people to subscribe because that's definitely going to help us grow this further and, and bring more eyeballs to what we're actually trying to do here. And yeah, go watch the pack films. 11 hours of pack. Amazing stuff. If you didn't know, I dropped an NFT right in the middle of the black hole that sits in the middle of pack film three. Someone snapped it up. But that's not to say that I won't do that again at some point. So keep your eyes peeled for more stealth NFT drops coming in the future because it's just fun to do that. By the way, that NFT, it cost four cents to buy it. Four cents. That's it. That's how I roll, isn't it? All right. I will see you on the next one. Have a great rest of your week. Peace out.